There's one other visual setting that I forgot to show you when I was having you configure your SketchUp model to look like mine, and that is under the View and Edge Style setting. I believe by default, profiles are shown. Now, a profile is just an outer edge, or it is a line that's not really connected to anything else. So for example, if I draw this shape like that, notice it, it ends right here where these clearly end from edge to edge. So profile edges just are displayed slightly different. Now, in most of these videos, I've got that turned off. Just know that it's underneath view, edge style, and profiles. Now, also, while you are there, you could turn off your edge styles completely, but you know, you kind of need some edge styles to be shown. So I'll just have my edges turned on most of the time. Um, extension is really more of a stylistic thing. Notice how it just goes slightly over the edge. Typically won't be using that, but this is what mine typically looks like. And more times than not, keep profile turned off, but you may want to turn yours on. It's really tempting to jump straight into 3D and start cranking out some shapes like this. But I really caution against doing that because even though this is kind of fun and you can create some fun shapes, it's really easy to miss out on some really, really important conventions. SketchUp is almost too easy. It's easy to ignore a lot of the really important things that can make you a powerful SketchUp modeler. So I just caution you against getting too carried away because honestly, you know, you might you might be kind of impressed at first, but if you don't cover the basics, you'll find yourself limited in what you can really do. That being said, I'm going to start a new file. Get rid of that one. And uh, we'll just look at 2D. So as before, I'll grab the pencil tool here and I'll go ahead and just draw a shape using the click release click method. Now, before I go further, I should mention I was wrong. I said something false. In the uh, model info, under your units, I told you if you set your units uh, to decimal and feet and disabled length snapping, that that would be saved the next time you started a file. That is incorrect. The template only saves the view and a few other things, but you will need to come back and change this each time. Now, if I were to save this file, these settings would be saved in that file. Alternatively, you can save this as a template. You'd want to do that before you drew anything. Um, but that's another option. But just keep that in mind. wanted to clarify that. Back to our SketchUp model, I've got myself a very nice rectangle. Let me talk a little bit about this click, release, click, and the click versus drag method. So I strongly recommend you use the click, release, click method. You can use that with pretty much any drawing tool with the exception of this freehand one, but uh, let's not worry about that right now. But for example, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. And just as before, you can, you can encourage these inference lines just by hovering. Some of them might just be there automatically. And you can click to start. I'll get another inference line down here by hovering. And I can click to set. So click, release, click. You can also do a click drag release and you'll get an idea of how this works for pretty much all the tools pretty quick. This time I will click and I'm holding down and dragging. Um, now it won't set that until I release this button. So I'll go ahead and hover over that point so I can get that to line up. As soon as I release, that shape is drawn. Just be aware that you can do that. I recommend using the other way. And as I make more of these videos, you will see why that is. So let me talk about the eraser tool. Now that we've got some very basic geometries drawn in here. When I talk about geometries, I'm talking about lines and surfaces, and that's about it. Or more accurately, lines and faces. And I'll differentiate between a face and a surface later on. But this is all that SketchUp is. It's, uh, it's made up of edges. Whoops, let me close that. If I grab the select tool, I can click on an edge and I can see that it's highlighted. I can click on a surface and I can see that that is highlighted. And uh, that's all there is. Now, don't let that uh, don't let that be daunting because if you do a search for, you know, an example would be a Blackhawk SketchUp model. You'll find a page here with a tutorial that someone put together how to create a Black Hawk helicopter. So here you go. 
extra credit for anyone who can uh, reproduce this exactly. But if you scroll through here, you can see that's pretty darn detailed. And, and it really is nothing more than lines and surfaces. So you can get some uh, get pretty detailed stuff in SketchUp. But fundamentally, this is all it's made up of. And once again, I can click on those, see that they're highlighted. Um, if you click on something else, the previous thing gets deselected. And if you click in white space, it deselects everything. We'll come back to some more advanced selection tools. The one piece of advice I'd give you right now is get in the habit of clicking in white space a lot just to make sure nothing is selected. Let's talk about the eraser tool. So the eraser tool only works on edges. If I position this over the surface and click, nothing happens. If I position it over this edge and click, the edge is erased as well as the surface, because that surface is defined by that edge, so it doesn't exist without it. If I grab the pencil tool, and I'll click there, I'll click there, what that is is called healing a surface, and it comes in really handy because there will be a lot of times where you will be expecting to see a surface, but there is not one. So um, oftentimes all I have to do is connect two points to heal that surface. Let me go back to the eraser tool. Now, as I showed you, I can't click on these surfaces to erase them. If you want to erase a surface, you need to right click and select erase. Now there's a bunch of other really useful options here. We will come back and visit those more later on. But right now, I just want you to be aware that's how you can erase a surface. So now I've got four edges and no surface. So I'll grab the pencil tool and I can heal that simply by connecting two points. So why might you want to do that? Well. I'm going to grab a rectangle, and I'll do the same thing with a circle. And uh, sure, why not the polygon too? And while the polygon tool, I'll intentionally make that overlap a few edges like this. Now yours may or may not be a hexagon, don't worry about it. The neat thing about this is you do not need to go back to the eraser tool. You can right click and access that uh, erase function pretty much all the time. Right click, erase. So here's an example where I may want to punch some holes into a surface. You know, right click down here and erase. The one time you will not see that option is if you have one of these guys active. The, the navigation tool set are blue. So if you have one of these blue tools or the hand tool, you know, I, I've shown you how to orbit with the uh, middle wheel button, but you can also just manually grab it over here. If you do that and right click, you just get the other navigation options. So you'll want, if, if you don't see erase, it's probably because you got one of those selected. You can either hit escape on your keyboard or hit exit and uh, go back and grab one of these. And then you will see that uh, erase option. So that being said, let's go ahead and start a new file. Get rid of that one. And this time I'm going to draw a rectangle like we've been doing before. I'll grab the rectangle tool and I'm intentionally going to draw it so it's it's off center from my uh, axes here because I don't want those lines to uh, overlap or get in the way of some of the things I'd like to show you. All I really want is a very simple four edge, one face geometry on the SketchUp model. And I'll grab the select tool again. So there's a few other tricks you can do to select things. You know, one is to just click on it, right? And you click on something else, that gets deselected. If you hold on the shift key, that is the really the universal add or subtract. Everything you click on will get added to that selection. If you click on something else while you're still holding the shift key, the element gets deselected. And as always, you can just click in white space to deselect everything. So that's one way. Another way is to draw a selection window. And I'm dragging a window that encompasses all of my geometries and I let go everything is selected super important convention here if you drag from left to right that's a selection window so only the geometries that are entirely inside that window are selected so for example only that edge was selected there if I go like that notice the only geometry that is is inside of this box is that top one so if I let go only that is selected. If you go from right to left, that is a bounding box. So when you do that, all of the geometries that touch the bounding box 
are selected as soon as you let go. So notice all of the geometries except this leftmost edge here. So just keep that in mind. Dragging a selection from left to right or right to left will give you a different result for the geometries that you are selecting. So let's go ahead and click over here. All right, another way. You can double click and triple click. And to do this, I'm going to first bisect this. So grab your select, um, your, I'm sorry, your line tool and hover over that midpoint. It should say midpoint. Mine isn't for some reason. Hopefully yours is. But visually, you can see that it's a different color. So just hovering, click, and find that bottom midpoint and click. Because I want a couple different faces here for this next step. With the select tool, if you click once, it selects that geometry, whether it is a edge or a surface. If you double click, it selects that geometry as well as the, um, the other geometries that are related to it. For example, a surface grabs that surface as well as the edges that define that face. Technically, it's a face. It's not a surface, it's a face. Surfaces can have multiple faces in them. More on that later. All right, click in white space to deselect. If I double click on a segment, it selects that segment as well as any faces that it helps define. If you triple click, it selects all connected geometries. So by triple clicking on this shape, everything that's connected becomes selected. And we'll click in white space to deselect. So while I'm doing all this selecting, it's, it's worthwhile to talk about the difference between active select and pre-select. Pre-select, it, it is what it sounds like. You pre-select your geometry, and then you do something with it. For example, you move it. Active select lets the tool do the selecting for you. So let's do the pre-select first. I'm going to click on this right surface so it's highlighted. Then I'll grab the move tool. Now. Hopefully you're getting the idea. Click once to start the move, and then just move your mouse around. SketchUp is waiting for you to position this. If I were to click here, that's where it would position it. But I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit Escape on my keyboard. And uh, this time I will select that center segment, click on the Move tool, click once to start, and once again, SketchUp is just waiting for me to click again, but I don't want to do that because I don't recommend pre-selecting. There's a time and a place for it, but you really need to understand active selecting first. So with nothing selected, now I'll grab the Move tool, and as you hover over these geometries, you'll see that they become highlighted. And I can highlight a segment, a surface, or an endpoint. So that's kind of neat because you can't pre-select an endpoint. And what I'll do here is I'll hover over that bottom endpoint click once to start moving it and uh, as before you've got your rubber banding you've got your inferencing I can see that that's snapping to the green direction I can snap it in the red direction if I do that uh, and you know maybe I want to position this half the depth of this shape so halfway up well as before all you need to do is hover over uh, a midpoint and as you move your cursor away you will see that dashed red inference line that has been encouraged. So I'll go ahead and click there because you know I want that to be exactly halfway up from that point right there. I'd like to talk a moment about different types of inferencing. That's some very basic inferencing, but it, it actually goes quite far. And you'll sometimes see a magenta color. Let me talk about that. Grab your line tool. Now we'll draw a line in this kind of this corner up here, but I don't want you to start at the midpoint. Start, you know. Hover over the midpoint, move your cursor up, and just kind of click at an arbitrary point to start this line. And as you move your cursor on that top edge, you'll see it snap, and, and the color will be this kind of magenta color. It's really a multi-purpose color that means different things, but just know that it is an inference. And in this example, it's telling me that I'm equally spaced across as I am down, or in other words, it would be a... a, a equilateral triangle, I think, where this top edge is the same as that edge. So that's what that one means. Here's another one. This time, start your line along this edge, maybe a little bit closer to that bottom angle. And interestingly enough, if I'm, I'm crossing over the center line here, so 
for whatever reason, it's not letting me infer like I did before because the, the geometries are just a little too confusing for SketchUp. So I can't get that same uh, magenta that I just had. I don't think I can. Nope, I can't. But here's another interesting one. If I hover just kind of arbitrarily over that bottom angle, that bottom segment, now if I move my cursor away, I've got a, a, an inference that is parallel to that. So see, there it is. You know, there I'm out of it. So, you know, I'm showing you this so you can start to get an idea of why you're seeing all these snaps all the time in these different colors. Some people want to turn them off right away, but you really got to embrace it because it is what SketchUp is built around. And oftentimes, you know, if you're doing like a soffit on a, on a shed or a roof, you might want a parallel line. Now, what's kind of neat here in all this too is modifier keys. We'll be using all kinds of modifier keys. A really important one is the shift key. So I'm going to press and hold shift. And as I do that, Notice that the line becomes thicker. If I let go, press it again, it becomes thicker. And what that does is it's locking it. So now, regardless of where I move my cursor, it's staying locked in that inference. So you'll be doing a lot of inference locking. Uh, really important one to know. Um, you know, maybe I just want to shoot that off to here. I'll hit escape. And I'll grab my eraser tool to come back here and clean that up. So the next tool, let's grab this one here. This is the uh, arc tool, and it does what you'd expect. It draws an arc. Now the little tool tip, or not, I'm sorry, not the tool tip, but the icon kind of gives you a little tip on what you need to do. Notice that there's a little arc drawn by my pencil, and that leftmost um, tiny, tiny circle is highlighted, saying, hey, that's the first thing you're going to draw. So if I click somewhere up here, you know, this time I'll, I'll click on the midpoint of this segment, and it looks like the line tool at first, you know, kind of like looks exactly like the line tool. And with the line tool, I can also get that magenta inference telling me that I'm equidistant down as I was across, you know, which is a good point to click on. So that'll be my second point. Now the third point is the bulge. That's that straight line right there. So that is telling me, you know, how much of a, I guess a bulge is what they call it for this shape. But this is neat. All right. Notice yet another snap. So this time I am now tangent. Um, I'm equidistant, but this is also telling us that we are tangent from the top and bottom. If I were to click, oops, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Click. There we go. Now that is set. I can grab my eraser tool and I will click and drag, let go. That cleans that edge up. So sometimes you will also see a bluish type color, which is a, another type of inference. And that one is pretty much telling you it's only really used with circles and arcs it's telling you when something is tangent so for this example i'll click uh, just somewhere on this top edge but this time i'll click my my second point just arbitrarily in this area here and as i move my mouse you know it doesn't need to be that uh that exact but i just kind of want to draw my shape about like that so it just kind of ends in the middle here. Now, if I were to right away click on that endpoint, there's that blue color. So it defaults to being um, tangent. So that curved point right there, it's at the tangent point where there's no hard edge. Um, and you know I can draw this and maybe click right here. But it's not quite done for you yet because if I click on this edge, even though I've got that blue color, now my third click, I can still change it, but I can always go back to that point. So if I want that to be perfectly tangent, which it is right there, I will click. So there's a, there's some very basic things here you need to know before we jump into 3D. Just know that SketchUp is nothing more than surfaces and edges. Really important, this convention of pre-selecting versus active selecting. And it's a, it's a good idea to start wrapping your head around these different types of inferencing that you can do, whether it's encouraging parallel lines or points of tangency. And knowing this stuff and really making it a habit to be watching for it will make you a much more efficient SketchUp modeler down the road when you do get to 3D designing.